Hi, I'm Frank Nunas and I'm the main cinematographer on the film In a State of Change, a documentary that I uh, collaborated on with my buddy Danelle Boyd. Um, and I wanted to walk you through the gear we've used for this film. Some of you might be interested in that. The main camera, this is the main camera setup that we used for the film. Most of the film has been filmed on this beautiful rig, the Sony FX6. It's lightweight and it's also very like run and gun type of camera. This is exactly what we needed and wanted for this project because you know, being out in the field, climbing up on mountains, you don't want it to be too heavy. You wanna be able to unpack it and quickly film instead of every time again, you know, building the whole rig. Uh, like you might have with other cameras. Uh, this means like we have XLR inputs built in and ND filters built in. So I could strip this whole thing down and I could still film. So that doesn't limit me. All the extras are just for comfort in a way. So what really creates the look for your film is what lenses that you use. We decided for this film to work with the DZO Film Vespit Prime lens kit. The, they are Cinema Prime lenses. I'm gonna show you over here because that one is a bit hidden in the rig. Um, these are very small Cine uh, primes, which is very nice. Keeps it also very light compared to other lenses. Um, they are they are beautiful. I love to work with them. We have a kit with the 25, the 35, the 50, and the 75. So you might wonder what lens, what focal length that you use most. Uh, I believe it's 35 mil. It's one of my favorite focal length. I also like to go to 25. Uh, which is really nice when you have very open aperture lenses, especially on the full frame. It gives a lot of bokeh, even though you go white. I prefer to go white because you get a lot of context in your scene. While if you would go more 50, 75, it's nice to go for close-ups, but you, you lose the background. You can see an external small HD monitor. I like to have a big monitor instead of the you know built-in monitors or the small monitors that come with the camera. It just gives me a lot more confidence. And you know, having good color monitor with good contrast and the possibility of having a LUT on there, just yeah, like I said, gives me confidence to know that what I'm doing looks good and, and I know it's it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be focused and whatever. We have a big V-Log battery that does add a lot of weight, but it allows me to power up everything from one battery, so I just have to think about one and not have a million different batteries. It does add a little bit of weight, but it also helped me balance this rig. Because the camera is so light, uh, without the V-Log battery in the back, it would like tilt forward. Uh, just because the, I think the lens is even heavier than the camera almost. On the front of the camera, we have a small matte box by Polar Pro. Really nice, because you know we're, we're out in the field. Um, it was very sunny in the summer. It's nice to block out that harsh light so we don't lose the contrast on our image. I think that's kind of it. As you can see, it's, um, yeah, we do have some audio equipment here, which we'll go into a bit later, but very, very nimble. I experimented a lot in the beginning with how this rig was gonna look. There was, you know, some shoulder rig elements on it, but honestly, when you're out in the field and you're, you've limited possibilities, even though it's nice to get stable shots on the shoulder uh, like this, it's less weight and it allows me to, it forces me actually to move around and, and get interesting angles. As I said, most of the film was filmed on this camera. We did use different type of cameras throughout the film. For example, for the interview setup, we used a B cam, which was filmed on the camera that Danella is right now filming with, which of course, you know, we couldn't film it on this because we have to show it. So let me turn around this camera and show you what that B cam was. Hey, yes, so this is the Sony Alpha 1, which we use in combination with the Sony A7S III uh, with the Vespid Prime lenses as well to capture a second angle during interviews, which we could use to cut to, to you know, create a different, uh, different dynamic uh, in the documentary. So in terms of audio, uh, we didn't have an audio guy. That would have been lovely. Would have been so much more comfortable. Maybe on the next project, we'll get a sound guy. But unfortunately, we just had to do it ourselves. The main option we used was lavalier mics. As you can see, this is the Sennheiser wireless uh, set. And you can hear me speak into the lav mic. I hope my hair wasn't touching it too much uh, or my necklaces, but I'm right now speaking into the beautiful lav mic. 
Throughout the filming, Danelle would almost always have a wireless lav mic on. This was extremely helpful because, you know, when you're running around with a camera, uh, even filming while Danelle is walking, I, you know, it would be impossible to have, uh, you know, boom pole above his head because, uh, you know, I, I only have two hands. I got a camera and then like, no. When the situation allowed us, for example, in sit down interviews, we actually would also put a boom mic. Sometimes laughs can be very boomy because they're right next to your chest, but also you have less risk of like, you know, the microphone scratching against things. You could stop and correct it, but you know, you'd rather not like stop an interview. It helps to have an alternative audio setup. When we were out in the field running and gunning, we did put the boom mic on top of the camera. Um, this allowed us to record anything or anyone that wasn't mic'd up with a wireless lav mic. So for example, when we were bumping into people on the hiking trail and we wanted to have a little, you know, spontaneous conversation with them, we could just capture it on camera and then have to mic them up or have any trouble of that. You know, there were like five people, so we're not gonna mic up five random people that we meet on a trail. So one piece of equipment that wasn't used that much during the filming, uh, but, but sometimes was necessary, uh, especially today, because we are in the darkest room of the universe. Lights, um, they're very bright in my face. I, I hope it's not too hot on the camera, but uh, lights can be very useful, um, not outdoors necessarily, and most of the film was filmed outdoors, but some of the interviews were filmed inside, and uh, sometimes lighting situations inside are terrible, so you just gotta take over and put your own lights. So we had these uh, beautiful Aperture 300Ds available uh, with a softbox just to make some soft light. Last but not least, the drone. Uh, because this film was, you know, very focused on landscapes, we needed an aerial, a very wide perspective that would give us a proper view to give us an idea of, of the whole landscape. And there's nothing better than seeing it from the air. So uh, the drone that we use for this film was the uh, Mavic Air 2, I believe, and was mostly operated by Danelle. Actually, everything except for one shot. There was one shot that Danelle couldn't film himself because he had to peer in that drone footage. Uh, but besides that, all of the drone footage that you see in the film is by the amazing Danelle Boyd. Uh, he's a great drone operator, and you can see it in the film. It making this film so much nicer with the drone footage. Anyway, so I think this kind of uh, wraps up the gear. I think we covered everything. It wasn't a lot, but you know, did the job. If you haven't watched the film, I hope you will watch the film at some point um, and you'll be able to see what amazing things we created with this gear. Thanks again, Adorama, for helping us out with all of this gear. Uh, otherwise, you know, this, this film wouldn't have been this you know, beautiful looking uh, or comfortable to make for us. So thanks. And uh, that's it.